So this is a brief anatomy review for the use of flow seal for the treatment of posterior epistaxis. Here we have a sagittal model. In the sagittal model we can see the nasal cavity and paranasal sinus region as well as the nasal pharynx here. In the nasal cavity, number 59, or this structure here, is the inferior turbinate. This structure is the middle turbinate. Posteriorly, in the nasal pharynx, where the Foley catheter balloon will be situated, we can see the eustachian tube orifice here. This is the floor of the nose, and here is the soft palate. Here on a model, you can see on the lateral wall the region from which posterior epistaxis usually originates. On these endoscopic images, you can see the posterior nasal cavity, and highlighted, again, are the zones where posterior epistaxis most commonly occurs. In the coronal model, again, we can see the middle turbinate here and here on opposite sides, and the inferior turbinate located here and here. When inserting the catheter to deliver the flow seal product to treat posterior epistaxis, you would insert the catheter into the nasal cavity roughly in this area. There are a number of items needed in order to treat a patient with posterior epistaxis using the flow seal treatment technique. The first is a package of flow seal. You also need a nasal packing tray, a 12 French Foley catheter, a nasal clamp for the catheter is optional. Sterile saline and a bowl to put it in are also needed to rinse out the excess flow seal at the end of the treatment. To anesthetize the patient, topical lidocaine is needed and a topical decongestant is advised. Two syringes are needed, a 10cc syringe in order to inflate the Foley catheter, as well as a 20cc syringe in order to rinse out the excess flow seal with the sterile saline. And lastly, a 14 French angiocath is needed in order to deliver the flow seal to the posterior nasal cavity. In order to provide adequate analgesia for the procedure, it is best to apply the topical lidocaine by applying it into the nares and applying two to three sprays. You can also use a topical decongestant if no contraindications based on the patient's health simply apply into the nares of interest and discharge. The first step in preparing the flow seal is to transfer 5 mLs of calcium chloride into the dry bottle of thrombin. To do this, we use the 5cc syringe, which is supplied in the package. Take the cap off the calcium chloride. Wipe the top with an alcohol swab. Allow it to dry. Insert the syringe and needle. Draw off 5cc's. Transfer the calcium chloride into the thrombin vial after having cleaned this with an alcohol swab and allowed it to dry. Leave the syringe in this bottle and gently swirl for a couple of minutes in order to uh, mix the two components. The next part of the procedure is to combine the thrombin with the gelatin matrix. To do this, we first draw off 5 mLs of the thrombin and then put it in the provided dish from the company. Discard your sharp. Then we draw up 4 mLs of the thrombin into this syringe which does not have the gelatin matrix in it. And then you combine these two syringes together. They have a lure lock, so you twist and rotate until snug. And then you need to mix the two components together several times for about a minute 
in order to have the thrombin completely mixed with the gelatin matrix. Insert the Foley catheter along the floor of the nose as you would for a nasogastric tube. When it's in the oropharynx, you've gone far enough. At this point, you need to withdraw the Foley catheter in a retrograde fashion while inflating the balloon with 5 to 6 cc's of saline. The balloon needs to be placed in the nasopharynx posterior to the coena. Here, it will direct blood out the front of the nose while not stopping the bleeding. If the bleeding has stopped once the Foley catheter is placed, you have advanced the catheter too far and are covering the site of bleeding. The catheter needs to be adjusted. Once the Foley catheter is correctly positioned and the patient is still actively bleeding from their epistaxis, the catheter to deliver the flow seal can be inserted in the nasal cavity along the floor of the nose to the back of the nose. Once at this region, you're ready to do, deploy the flow seal. Once in the correct position and deploying the flow seal, use all of the contents of the syringe and deploy it into the posterior nasal cavity. Once the flow seal has been delivered into the posterior nasal cavity, have the patient tilt their head backwards 10 to 15 degrees while securing the Foley catheter either with your hand or with a clamp which is applied with sufficient padding around the nares. Have the patient stay in that position for 10 minutes. Once 10 minutes has passed and if the bleeding has stopped, have the patient tilt their head forwards and then proceed to irrigate out the excess flow seal with sterile saline. Continue to irrigate out the, the flow seal until the irrigant comes back clear. Once the excess flow seal has been removed through irrigation, proceed to deflate the balloon of the Foley catheter and remove the Foley catheter from the patient's nose. Once the Foley catheter has been removed, if the patient is not bleeding, observe the patient for 30 to 60 minutes. If they do not have any further bleeding, you may discharge them home at that time. Consider consulting otolaryngology for a follow-up appointment in order to evaluate the posterior nasal cavity.